Yes, indeed. The sounds of the Night of San Sebastian visited. My name is Tall Biscuit. This is Blue Please here on Wow Radio, WCRadio.com. If you're not already in the IRC channel complaining, oh, why have you got this opinion? Then go to irc.mmirc.com, hash your pound Wow Radio, and I shall give you your free hat that says, Blizzard, I love you. Please take my gold for no good reason. See, I cannot imagine anyone ever defending that with a straight face. Now, if this wasn't the internet, I could see someone arguing that, a stifling a grin while doing so. Either that or you have to be the most colossal buffoon in the world. Like, hey, take some money. Here, here's a thousand gold. Like, are you telling me you wouldn't prefer to have that? I mean, come on. Really? Who are you trying to fool? Anyway, let's get on to the next topic as we do. Now, I have an interesting email that I received during the week. It's from Stig. He's a level 80 Torn Druid. He is on Mogtheridon. Mogtheridon. That's the cat server. EU. And it says this. It's titled, We want raids to not bring the class, but bring the player. And it says this. After leveling up to 80 through Northrend, I'm worried about how Blizzard are using vehicles in Wrath in questing dungeons and raids. I feel like they are going overboard with them and using them just for the sake of using them. On the Kill Jaden encounter in Sunwell Plateau, you have to use the Blue Dragon's anti-magic shield to be able to kill Kill Jaden. And it was fine. It seemed a bit tacked on, but it worked with the encounter. Now, the Oculus, the dragons become a significant part of the dungeon, and your conventional character seems absolutely insignificant to whether or not you can effectively beat the dungeon. This is also apparent in the battle for the Undercity, which was such a joke, setting up a few groups within the guild, and realising I'm as powerful as Chuck Norris on a lion bar, and I'm not making any difference whatsoever to the outcome. I really hope the Blizzard tones down vehicles in future content, and heaven forbid that we get a full raid zone based on the vehicle mechanic, because I don't want it to come to bring in the vehicle and not the player. Because it feels like I shouldn't be there, and anyone else can do it. This is a quagmire of a topic. Because, for once, I can't really fall down on either side of it. Because I see both sides, and I also agree as well as disagree with both sides. It's tricky, so let me try and deal with this for you. Now, the idea behind this topic is... To what extent should vehicles be used in Wrath of the Lich King when dealing with dungeons and raids? Now... The point is quite simple. It's that when you are in a vehicle, what matters is not your individual skills, and by skills I mean skills within the character, not your skills as a player. It's an entirely different matter that we'll come on to momentarily, and yes, it is relevant at this point. Now, it's the you get access to a certain number of abilities, depending on which vehicle you happen to be in, and those are the abilities you must use. Those are the abilities you have to use, and the encounter is designed around you having these abilities. Now, they also look at the fact that the vehicle has a specific amount of health and specific stats. It will always take the same kind of amount of damage. It will always deal the same amount of damage. It's preset. It's static. So the encounter is designed around those static entities. It doesn't have to vary. It doesn't vary in difficulty depending on what gear you have or indeed even what class you are. It doesn't matter. All that matters is the vehicle you're in. Now, this fellow here has an issue with that, and I can kind of understand that. However, there is a counterpoint. The counterpoint is this, and I want to take specific issue with one sentence that this fellow has come up with, and he says, I don't want it to come to bringing the vehicle and not the player. Now, I can kind of see what he's coming from there, but I think it's very badly worded, and if he actually means what he's written, then I have to completely disagree with him. The thing is, it's not about not bringing the player. It's about not bringing the class. It's also about not bringing the character. Yeah, the class and the character. So let's just, we'll break it down and say it's about not bringing the character. Because, well, what's eliminated through the use of a vehicle? Well, your individual stats, that's one thing. What else? Your gear, which obviously affects your individual stats. What else? The class you're playing. What else? Your race, to a lesser degree, because of racials and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what's eliminated by the use of a vehicle. Now what you can effectively see there is the standardization of a group. Yeah, That group is the easiest, easiest group to create an instance for. Because you know exactly what each individual player is going to have at their disposal. Like the, right, the biggest example, in currently anyway, is the Oculus. The Oculus is about riding dragons around and doing all this crazy airborne combat on dragons 
and there's certain colours of dragons, and those dragons have certain abilities. Yeah? Now, there is a little bit of variety there, because you can pick different coloured dragons with different coloured abilities. But what you do know is that those dragons have a certain amount of HP. Those dragons have certain abilities. You know this for a fact. And Blizzard knows this for a fact. The instance knows this for a fact. So the instance you go into is, t is tuned specifically around that idea. They're not having to deal with all of these different players, with all of these different thousands upon thousands of combinations of gear. Now, you can kind of predict what level gear people will be, but you're never going to get it right. It's one of the, quote, issues, unquote, that we've had with balancing raid content that we don't know. We're not sure exactly what's going to be on the characters that are coming into the dungeon. That's the clumsiest sentence I've ever put together in my life, but whatever. You have no idea about the composition of the raid group. You can have a rough idea, but you don't know specifically. Your idea is very vague. You know that there might be healers, there might be tanks, there might be DPS in a certain ratio, but that's all you really know. Guilds go in with different setups, and guilds go in with different gear. Each player has individual gear on their character. So, you can argue that that is a bad thing, in that you are ignoring people's accomplishments, and you're ignoring people's choice of class, in favour of this standardised kind of, I am riding on a vehicle and I press three buttons kind of game. However, as there always is, there is a counterpoint, and this counterpoint is relatively strong. Let's go back to the sentence again. Let's read it again for your benefit. I don't want it to come to bringing the vehicle and not the player. Here's the thing. You are bringing the player in the vehicle. And indeed, the vehicle does not operate itself. The vehicle is controlled by a player. Just because it gets rid of your gear, you know, it takes stats out of the equation, just because it gets rid of your class does not mean the player skill is not required. Now, I would like to cite an example of where this has happened before. More specifically, way more specifically than Kill Jaden, way more specifically than, say, Kaelfast, which involved the use of certain items. No. Way more specific than that. We're talking, of course, about Terran Gorefiend in Black Temple. Those of you who have not done Terran Gorefiend, let me give you a brief example, just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Terran Gorefiend is a DPS fight that has a specific mechanic. When you get... I believe it's called the Shadow of Death on you. You have 60 seconds before you die, and there is no way to stop this from happening. When you die, you turn into a ghost for around 60 or so seconds. While you are a ghost, you can see these shades, these evil ghost things. And you get about four or five of them. These things will head towards the raid, and they can hit the raid, and they can do a massive amount of damage to the raid and do all manner of unpleasant things. But only you can see them, and only you, as the ghost, can damage them. And you are given a specific set of abilities in order to do so. You're given, like, I, a spirit lance, spirit chain, spirit nova, and all this stuff. It's been a long time since I've done that fight. Now, at that point, it does not really matter what class you were, because you become this ghost with this specific preset number of abilities. And you have to do so, you have to do all these things in a specific order, and you'd be surprised how many people screw it up. And continue to screw it up all the way through to the launch of Wrath. You know, once they nerf the hit points down 30%, if you had a good enough group, you could actually DPS Terran Gorfin down before the first one, which is embarrassingly terrible. And I can't believe they desecrated that fight. Ugh. Vomit worthy, I tell you. But before that, you had to deal with that mechanic. And indeed, they designed a flash game, not Blizzard, but a enterprising young fellow, designed a flash game in order to train guilds in how to do this fight. Because that mechanic confused the hell out of people. And it required throwing away the idea that your gear gave you an advantage. That your spells, your class gave you specific advantages. No, everyone was brought down to the same level. Everyone had to do the same job. And now that was a valid mechanic. There was nothing wrong with that mechanic. Indeed, Terran Gorfin was considered by many to be one of the better fights in Black Temple. I would go as far as to say, aside from maybe ROS, it was probably the second best fight in Black Temple. The rest of them were kind of dull, at least in my opinion, but there you go. So it has happened before, so to expect that it won't happen again is unreasonable, particularly when you now have this new game mechanic in the form of vehicles that they can use to put it forward to make it a little bit more exciting. It's not just about spawning as a ghost anymore, it's about riding a dragon around doing all this cool stuff. Now I agree that it has been used an awful lot so far. It has. 
You've seen loads of vehicle quests. And you're seeing them more in instances and indeed in raid dungeons. And I have no doubt that we will see them. So the argument really, you're split between two things. Do you value the level of gear and the class you're playing? Or do you value the individual skill of a player? Now, WoW, again, is not a particularly skillful game. It's not all that hard to press a set of buttons. But there is some level of skill in it. Some level. It's not huge, but it is there. Why? Because, well, there's plenty of people that can't do it right. Obviously, if it wasn't skillful, I'm sure everyone could do it. They can't, as Terran Gorfin sadly demonstrated in our guilds. Ugh. I remember that, and it's horrible. It's not something that I would soon like to repeat. So wh what side of the fence do you sit on? That's the question. Which one do you fall on? I'd, in my opinion, everything in moderation, including moderation. The idea of having these dungeons or raid encounters that use vehicles is pretty cool. I must say that the idea of having the Oculus use them exclusively is kind of odd. I do think using it in an entire raid dungeon is a little bit excessive. I think using them to break up the monotony of certain raid encounters is a good idea. So maybe you have five bosses in, in a raid, or you have five bosses in a five-man instance or heroic. And one of those requires the riding of a vehicle. Okay, I'm all right with that. That's fine. An entire instance? Going a little bit overboard. I think people need to bear in mind that WoW has always been a battle between gear and skill. And again, skill, not a lot of it. Just before you bite my head off, not a lot of skill involved in WoW, but it is there. It does exist in some small portion. So, what you have to ask yourselves is, where do you draw the line and where does the balance come from? And which do you prefer? I say to those who like the vehicles and say, hey, it's a more skill-based thing. Well, WoW's always been about gear. More so than anything, because it has a low level cap. The only way to progress your character beyond that level cap in terms of power is to upgrade your gear. That's been the way it's always been, and people are okay with that. People are pretty cool with it. I certainly don't have a problem with it. It's all about getting epics for me. Yes, I did just say it. <laughs> It's all about getting epics and killing the dragon with said epics. That's what it's always been about, and that, that's what I always find fun about the game. That, that's the best part of it for me. So, to suggest that that should be abolished is ridiculous. That's tearing the very heart and soul out of the game. But then again, Suggesting that it should all be about that when we now have this new option is also pretty unreasonable because WoW has to advance. It can't stay stagnant. Vehicles are one of the better things that have been introduced in Wrath. They are very good. There's a lot of fun to be had with them. They are more appropriate in some areas than others. I don't mind having the occasional vehicle quest because it breaks up the monotony of leveling. It's like, I don't mind having all of these quests where it's like, use item on mob. You know, which is the standard when it comes to wrath. I find that more interesting because it tends to get rid of the whole kill six normus problem that we had with TBC and with Vanilla WoW. It eliminates that to some degree by dealing with the monotony and making each quest have some identity of its own rather than kill X or kill Y. It's better for the story progression, it's better for your own personal enjoyment, it's better for the immersion factor. So yeah, it's about moderation. I wouldn't like to see an entire raid based around this, no. In my opinion, raid progression has something to do with gear. Not even a question about it. Uh, I've been the guy who's been in favour of removing attunements. Now it's not just down to the fact that I want to see people succeed via their own skill and skill as a cohesive raid, but I want to see people given the choice to go into something undergeared and maybe be it, beat it anyway just because they're great. So. This whole issue has to be totally conflicted, as you can imagine. Half of it says, yes, gear should be what matters. I gain gear to get to better instance. I gained the gear by being at this skill level. I am now doing content this skill level up, and my gear is assisting me in doing so. And indeed, part of my character's identity is because of the gear that I have, and that's very important. And the other half of me says, well, if people are skillful enough to do the instance, they should be allowed to do it regardless of gear. So I'm going to be conflicted. I'm going to be totally split down the middle on this. I really am. I don't see the problem with either argument. And then I also see the problem with both arguments. It's confusing. Help! Email the at gmail.com. Tell me what you think on this issue. We shall cover it a little bit later on in the show. My name is Tall Biscuit. This is Blue Please here on WoW Radio. We'll play some Prodigy. I haven't done that in a while.
Why not? What should we play? Hmm. I don't know. They're all pretty good. Let's do this one. This is Prodigy Without a Space, and I'll be right back after this. My name is Tolbiscuit. This is Blue Please on Wild Radio, WCRadio.com. Enjoy. Enjoy. 